this is the story of Edward the Confessor. It all started when Ethelred Unred begot 13 children in total, who, besides Edward himself, are of no further importance to the story at all, except for one or two, Edmund and Alfred. However, we will get to that later. So as I was saying, 13 children and the seventh son was Edward, meaning that he was not in line to become king anytime soon. How did this happen though? Well, let's find out. After Ethelred's first wife died, he chose Emma of Normandy as his second wife, and together they had three lovely children, Goda, Edward and Alfred, and life was beautiful. Until a wild viking appeared. In 1013, Swine Forkbeard conquered the throne, and the whole family flees to Normandy. Except for Ethelred, who joins them later. After reigning for many years, <coughs> just joking, Swine dies in 1014, and the whole family returns to England. And what's more, Ethelred becomes king again. Hurrah! Poor Ethelred dies in 1016, and his son from his first marriage becomes king, Edmund Ironside. What a fine king he was. Very clever as well. He had the brilliant idea to make a pact with the viking son of Swine, Knut, to divide England, and whosoever dies first shall give his part to the other. And surprise surprise, after a few months Edmund came to a mysterious end while sitting on the toilet. Somehow a spear found its way into his body. Knut becomes king now, and they flee again. Emma of Normandy stays behind though, and marries King Knut now, and they have two babies together, Harte Knut and Gunhilda. Knut also made two babies with his first wife, Harald and Swine. In 1035 Knut dies, and even though Harte Knut was the logical heir, he was too busy conducting his business in Denmark, and offered the throne to Harald, who subsequently became king. Harald dies in 1040. And one year later, Edward, who was still in exile in Normandy, received an invitation by Harte Knut, asking him to return to England. And so he did, joining Emma and Harte Knut. Harte Knut then ruled England until he dies in 1042. And due to the fact that Alfred and all his other brothers had died at this point, finally Edward has become king, the king of whole England. Hurrah, hurrah! He marries Edith, however he tells her they shall have zero children, because he has taken a vow of celibacy, perhaps influenced by living in a monastery in Normandy for a large part of his life. In 1051 he sent Edith to a convent, because he never really wanted to be married to her in the first place after all. In 1052 he has the marvelous idea to order the constructing of Westminster Abbey. This keeps him fairly occupied for quite a while, overseeing the building of this abbey. But then, alas, even Edward has become an old king now, and the time has come to choose a successor. He sent Harold Godwinson to Normandy to tell William, whom he became closely acquainted with during his time in exile in Normandy, that he shall be the next successor to the throne. With this final sane act, King Edward blows out his last breath on January 5th, 1066. And that would be the last we hear of the story. But then, Harold Godwinson claims that King Edward has changed his mind on his deathbed and had not intended for William to become king anymore. Who shall become king next? Dum dum dum. To be continued.